Okay, so I'm gonna be doing something different now. I'm also be go going to do movie reviews, like clipless uh, reviews to like new movies and etc. So um, yeah, this is gonna be my review for Willy's Wonderland. Now this has been everywhere, everywhere on the internet. Um, reviews from like Cinema Snob, Angry Joe Show, 3C films sean chandler reacts and all that type of stuff like a lot of people have been talking about it and i kind of want to give my thoughts on it because i really like this movie <laughs> also uh by the way sorry to interrupt but uh the camera feed is terrible so i'm gonna have to like get that fixed soon but for now you gotta deal with this um but yeah this movie is really good and um finally we have like another animatronic movie to talk about other than the banana splits movie like, I still love that movie, but it's always good to, like, compare and contrast, like, with other movies before the Five Nights at Freddy's movie comes out, which I have no idea when that's gonna come out. Um, so, yeah, um, if you don't want to hear any, if you don't want to dive in, I will say there are gonna be spoilers in it. If you don't want to hear any of that, click off the video, okay? Because I, because I really want to give a fair warning to those who haven't seen it. It is literally bat shit insane it really is so uh with that said um it was pretty good i really like nicholas cage in this movie he he doesn't talk a lot i thought it was weird because like you know nicholas cage is one of those people where like whenever he talks like just insane things come out of his mouth but i kind of like this um like I've only seen Nicolas Cage in a few other movies. I've seen him in Face Off and the two Ghost Rider movies. And I'm trying to think if there was another one I saw him in. But I digress. Um, I Like, in those movies, he says crazy lines. Like, in Ghost Rider 2, he's, like, getting so crazy. And then he's, like, saying stuff like, Scrape it at the door! Or something like that. Or some weird... Or something like some weird thing. And there's none of that in this movie. Like, um... It, it is cool to give it, like, a silent protagonist, but... Really? Nicolas Cage as a silent protagonist? Like, it, it, it's weird, but... As a, I can also kind of see this working. So... Yeah, but overall... He did a phenomenal job, especially kicking the animatronics asses. Like, I thought he was really, really cool. Also, uh, the animatronics, really funny in this movie. Um, I just re recently found out what the budget for this movie was. It was like $5 million. And they did a really good job with it. Like, I really did like how they made, like, the animatronics look like they were actually there because they didn't have enough money to make actual functioning animatronics so they made puppets out of it and it was really good like i thought they were there like a lot of people have been saying like there's a lot of cgi in this movie i can't i can't tell i can't tell a lot of the cgi like the only cgi thing i could tell well two things um one where at the beginning there's the blood that splats all over the screen where it's playing the commercial. And the other one is um with what was that uh fairy's um animatronic name? Oh, uh I think it was Siren Sarah. I her uh whenever she had to like uh get onto the trees and was like climbing up, like like crawling backwards up, um it was pretty cool, like, 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 you could tell it was a bit fake, but it was kind of fake to the point where, like, it didn't really matter. Also, speaking of which, I really do like how, for her design, they kind of give her, like, a Ballora type thing, like, because obviously, to, to those who, who were stupid enough not to put this together, this is obviously a ripoff of the Five Nights at Freddy's movie, like how the Banana Splits was a ripoff, but I really do like how they make her a lot like Ballora, where it's, like, to the point where she's, like, a dancer. It, like, she's a fairy, but, like, you can tell, like, she's kind of, like, a dancer to a degree. Because, like, I don't know, just, like, her design and stuff. And, um, the, the way she moved was kind of, like, a dancer. Like, I, I'm having trouble trying to put, put this together. But, like, you could totally get, like, a Ballora 5 from her. And 
yeah, like she, I, I do like this one scene at the end where you think that she's dead, but um, she comes out of like a garbage bag. You um, there's like these two dudes that are like chanting in the car, but then she has, but then she like finds a lighter, lights up the gas tank, and then it just blows, and like you can see her just like comically just like falling back, like flying backwards, just like ah, <laughs> like it was really funny, but um. Yeah, like, she... Another cool thing about her is that when she flicks the lighter on, you can see, like, her pupils dilate, actually. Like, how the Tyrannos like the T-Rex does in Jurassic Park. And I thought that was, like, a really cool feature to that. Like, they went from... They went from broke on this movie. Like, $5 million, like... It's a good B-movie. Like, I'm not saying this is, like, Nightmare on Elm Street worthy or, like... Friday the 13th worthy type thing, but it did go from broke. It w it did a good job, and a lot of people love it. Um, but yeah, onto the other animatronics. Uh, it was like this night dude who like got so sidetracked. Like, why even have him there? Like, I do like all of the signs. Like, there's like a gorilla, a turtle, an ostrich, a chameleon. Uh, you got Willie the Weasel, but there's like this one dude who's a knight. And all he does, if I remember correctly, was that uh, he, like, stabs one of the teens, like, totally worthless. You didn't have to have, like, a bunch of teens there, but just for a higher body count. But, yeah, he got sidetracked a lot. And I was like, you could cut him out and it wouldn't be a big deal. But I'm not saying, like, that's, like, the biggest problem with this movie. It's not. I don't have any major issues with this movie. And uh, for a budget of $5 million, they did a really good job. Like, I know there were some scenes where, oh, they they fall through a roof and, like, they bend their knees and then it cuts them falling. Pardon me. But they don't show, like, the hole in the roof. But when you, when you put scenes like that aside, it's a solid B movie. Like... <laughs> there was there's this one um animatronic uh the chameleon the the girl who was acting all innocent and sweet and I I'm, I'm gonna be le legitimately honest with you I got suckered into thinking that she was actually uh one of the good guys because um she's talking to this kid like how she she got like put there by accident like she didn't mean to like like be like uh put into like the her spirit in the uh animatronic but there's a really cool twist where when the dude's just like okay no she's no she's no she's she's no, she's a good guy i'm gonna try to help her she like like spits her tongue at him like weird that an animatronic has like a long tongue but whatever they're going for like the nightmare foxy effect and like he and like it snaps his neck and <laughs> it's really funny because I was just like, oh, shit! <laughs> like, I really wasn't expecting that. And, um, yeah, um, but I will say there are some characters that I really didn't like. Like, the sheriff was, um, too much of an asshole. <laughs> like, you can have good asshole characters in movies, but, like, this was one of the ones where it's just, like, unbearable. And, um, like, she... I know it's for the... Okay, so the whole thing is that, like, um, Willie's Wonderland is based off of, like, this serial killer who opened up a family restaurant and hired other serial killers to work there. And then it's cut... A lot of callbacks to Five Nights at Freddy's is where they were... there. There's, like, this special room called the Fun Room, and you would have, like, the main owner of that restaurant dress up as Willie Weasel... And uh, when he lured families back there, he would kill them. Kind of like how William Afton lured the, the six kids into the parts and services room and killed them. S sorry if I'm, like, jit, like, cold and shivering. It's, like, cold in my room. Um, but, and then they did a thing where, but before they got, like, um, uh, arrested by the police, they took their own lives. They did, like, this satanic ritual where they could like, transfer their spirits, like, their souls into the animatronics, and I'm like, that's pretty good, because that would be a cool way of thinking, like, well, why, why the hell are the animatronics, like, attacking, because, like, yes, there's, like, uh, faulty programming, because, like, that's one of the things with the Banana Splits movie, because they were programmed to, that the show must go on, 
and uh, it backfired because they would stop at nothing to make sure that the show would continue. But for this, it kind of makes more sense why a restaurant, a, a kid's restaurant, animatronics would attack because it has like the souls of a bunch of serial killers and like like a bunch of bad people possessing them is a really good idea. Now I and I will say this, like I said about the the uh the kids, the like the other teens in this movie, you could cut them out. That you wouldn't miss a thing. Like there's they're just basically there for cliches. Like I I know I don't like using the term cliches and like trying to ignore that type of stuff, but you literally have two teens who like they they bang each other in like the fun room and then you have like one of the animatronics just watching like that kind of that kind of raises the question why would you just watch teens bang like that like uh that's kind of messed up but it's like some of them are okay like i found the lead teen the teen girl um to be really good uh with delivering the backstory talking to nicholas cage about it and um yeah stuff like that uh, there's this one other teen, I think it's supposed to be, like, the boyfriend, or supposed boyfriend, because, like, um, he, he acts like, oh, oh, we, we should do what she says type thing, and it's kind of like a suck-up, so, um, but other, so, but back to what I was saying, um, the serial, so, after, uh, the serial killers, uh, possess the animatronics, they shut down Willie's, and, they reopen it years later to make sure, like, they could, like, cover up everything. But when you got possessed animatronics, it's not going to work out. So they, like, <laughs> I just remembered one funny scene that, like, they'd be programmed to say s stuff that wasn't that wasn't in their programming. Like, there was, like, this little kid that was about to touch, like, Siren Sarah's, like, breasts. <laughs> and I kid you not, she literally said, what the fuck that boy? And I'm like, whoa! Whoa! Like, this movie had the nerve to say that, and, like, it was so stupid, but funny. Like, I couldn't stop laughing at that, and it was... <laughs> like, it, 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 that that was for the price of admission, just to, just to hear that, because, like, you want to get that type of stuff from, like, the Banana Splits movie, because they would still have, um, even though... They weren't possessed. They were, and they were still programmed to say the same things for the TV show. It would kind of work it in, but you wouldn't hear like Drooper saying something like "you're about to get fucked" or something like that. So, um, yeah, I, I I do like how they break through their programming and stuff, and like it's more of the uh the 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 the, the uh the serial killers talking and um yeah i thought that was like really interesting so what else can i say about this movie um the death scenes are really funny and a lot of animatronics are cut short uh but it's practically because like you're you're saving it up for willy at the end to attack but he doesn't have that many lines in it like he only okay i shouldn't say that he has lines when he does like uh, when he's singing, like, the restaurant theme, like, It's Your Birthday, and all that type of stuff, and he sing it, sings, like, the song about six little chickens or something like that. I think it was supposed to show, like, how many teens were left. Uh, but when he's fighting Nicolas Cage, he doesn't talk a lot, and I thought that was a nitpick. That, like, that, that was a nitpick that I had, because, like, you could have had him say some stupid lines, like how like, the chameleon and Siren Sarah was, like, were doing, like, with the other, with the other, um, kids, and, yeah, so, but, but it was pretty cool, like, and another one that I like, um, th there, there are a lot of funny scenes in this movie, so it's, it's more of, like, a horror comedy, to a degree, um, but, so, okay, so the lead teen girl and Nicolas Cage are about to fight the chameleon, so Nicolas Cage is, like, he's in his, like, he's about to, like, he's, like, shit's about to happen, but then his watch goes off, and I'm like, oh, yeah, he's, like, he has to take breaks, because the dude who, uh, said that if he cleans Willie's, he'll, uh, t pay for his car, uh, he said to, like, take many breaks, and then, so what happens is that he's just, like, 
Uh, and then he just like goes off and g d drinks one of his energy drinks and then plays the ping pong machine and I'm like you're about to leave this girl for dead man like like it's a bending in the ink machine where at the at the beginning of chapter five when you have like that seeing tool um there's like writing on the wall saying she'll leave you for dead you you have it backwards in this case like he'll leave you for dead and <laughs> It was really funny. Like, he just, like, gave her, like, a pocket knife, and then he was just like, mm. and then he just left. Like, I thought that was really funny. Like, there are perfect funny moments in this movie, but there, like I said, there are some moments, like, with the teens having sex, it's kind of cliche. Um, I don't even remember what happened to the other teens, because there was, there was like, a, there was, like, I think six or seven teens, um... One of them died by the night dude, like when he stabbed him through the through the torso, and um, yeah, I don't I, I don't remember what else. Like I, I just remember that the teen time sex died. Then the, the dude got stabbed, and um, the the one by, by the chameleon. But I feel like there was like one more teen who got killed, and I really don't remember who who it was. Like I can't for the life of me remember. So. Um, yeah, um, but, and there's, like, this wormy officer who's just, like, he's just, like, eh, eh, you're kidding with me, I get it, I can take a joke, but, like, when the sheriff is being serious, and, um, I keep forgetting to, t to talk about this, so, after they close release for the second time, the sheriff, the dude who says, um, he'll pay for Nicolas Cage's car, and the dude, like the like, like the mechanic, were all in cahoots. Well, like they like they made a deal with the devil type thing. Like if you like, we'll give you people to feast on if you don't uh kill everyone in the town. So and you have like this little flashback of people like people before Nicolas Cage um like going the clean willies, but they get killed by the animatronics. And it w it is clever, but it kind of shows how everyone is a dick in that town. Like, apart from my language, but, like, you know, other people reviewing isn't, like, been child-friendly as well. And, like, I don't have the tension for it as well. But, yeah, they're, like, real jerks in this. Like, um, the sheriff is, like, she, like, she holds Nicholas Cage at gunpoint. And he's like, you should have died. You should have just let Willie kill you. And I'm like... What universe would that be okay in? Like, um, it, it is cool to have, like, one of those, like, ghost town people where, like, everyone's on edge. But even to that extent, like, that's kind of messed up. Thank God that, um, uh, when Willie appears, he just, like, bitch slaps her and, like, cuts her in half. It, it, it kind of reminded me of, uh, in Freddy vs. Jason where, uh, the one girl was, uh, confronting Freddy saying, like, how Jason is better than him, and then, like, lo and behold, uh, Jason appears b behind her, and then, like, with the machete, he just, like, smacks her, then, like, she goes flying. It was kind of like that, but in, but in Willie's case, it, uh, she got, like, chopped in half, and, um, it was a really cool effect, but, uh, when you think about it, um, I'm trying to think of what else, um, but yeah, there there are really a lot of cool scenes, like cool action scenes, cool uh comedy scenes, and cool like horror type scenes, like with like the jump scares and such. And um the one that that also had me laughing was uh oh wait no, I already uh talked about it. It's when uh Siren Sarah uh takes the lighter, put uh gets it to the gas tank and then she just like flies back. I already uh mentioned that. Um See, I, I've only seen this movie, like, yesterday, but yet I'm having trouble trying to remember it, most of it, because, um, yeah, and, like, there was this cool, uh, montage where, like, every time when Nicolas Cage takes a break, he would, um, drink an energy drink, and then he would, like, like, crush the can and throw it away, but I'm like, if you drank that many energy energy drinks in real life, I don't think you would be alive, <laughs> like, like, you would get a heart attack from all of that, <laughs> um, but, yeah, uh, other than that, I think this movie is really good. Um, it, I, I, I definitely recommend it. Like, like I said, I don't see it as, like, like, the best type of horror movie where, like, like, it'll be in the history books, but, like, 
it will be remembered as like another Five Nights at Freddy's movie other than the banana splits. And and it does have and and like it does have a good reputation. Like I've seen all over YouTube that people love this movie, like making fan art, uh clips from the movie, um voice impressions. Like I've seen it all. And it's like I'm glad that this movie is getting a good fan base because when I saw 3C Films talk about it, um, I'll leave a link in the description if if uh, you don't know who I'm talking about. Um, I saw him talk about it for like a year and a half now, and I'm like, eh, I mean, I like the Banana Splits movie, but another FNAF uh ripoff, like, I'm not so sure. And like, thank God this movie proved me wrong. Because I really do like it. I think this is a really great movie, and yeah, I just I'm I'm glad I'm glad people like it. So um, yeah, that that's all I gotta say. Like, there's nothing much else to it. Um, if if you guys want to see more uh videos on me reviewing um movies in the future, like doing a clipless review, um, let me know in the comments. And and I'm sorry about the delay for the Predator 2 reaction. Um, I've just been so busy, and um, I haven't gotten around to it. So, uh, I, that video will come. I promise you. It will be uploaded soon, and I, and it will be done. I promise you. So, just keep, for the, just keep that in mind in the future. And with that said, go see Willy's Wonderland. If you have it, if you have, um, Amazon Prime, Hulu, uh, any of that stuff, go see it. I really do recommend it. Like, this is a fun, dumb, fun movie filled with batshit and saints, like, scenes. So, yeah, that, that's all I gotta say. So, um, leave a like, comment down below what else I should review next, and if you're new to the channel, subscribe, and as always, I will see you awesome people in the next video. See ya!